everybody. We're freshly back from the uh, Comic Con, the Midwest Comic Con in Chicago, and we're here to review the new sequel movie to Breaking Bad that just premiered this month on Netflix with the select viewings on at major theaters, and that is El Camino. What's it called? El Camino, which means the road in Spanish. Oh. So, why did Vince Gilligan, creator of the Breaking Bad series, call this El Camino? Well, maybe because it was called The Road, and Jesse is driving on the road away from the scene. And, or is it because El Camino is the name of the car that Jesse uses to drive away from the killing scene? We don't know. So, that is what this latest Vince Gilligan adventure is about. Jesse. What happens to Jesse? Before the movie, and I have this in quotes, if you could see my writing, begins, several scenes are shown from the series. One is Todd shooting one of Jesse's girlfriends in the back of the head. I mention that specifically because in the trailer, a picture of her and her son are prominently displayed as if it played some very significant role in the movie. Spoiler alert, not really. It's just part of a compilation of horrible events in Jesse, Jesse's life leading up to his escape from this horrible killing event. Then the movie shows a scene of Mike talking to Jesse about going away to Alaska because it's the final frontier, a place to start anew. When Jesse replies, but I want to make things right first, Mike responds, you can never make everything right. At first when I saw this, I thought Jesse was dead and talking to Mike in heaven. Then immediately afterwards, we see Jesse looking like a filthy, screaming banshee flying down the road in the El Camino car, getting away and going where? First, he sees in the distance a line of police cars headed towards him, and he immediately pulls off the road into a driveway, grabs his gun from the glove compartment, and lays low in the seat, grimacing and shaking. But they pass him right by. Then where does he go? This is my favorite part of the movie, because he heads off to Skinny Pete and Badger's house. Now, Marco, maybe you know, is this just Skinny Pete's house, or do they share it, or what? I guess it doesn't matter. But... That's Skinny Pete's house. Okay. These are two of my favorite characters. I was so happy to see them alive. After that Breaking Bad show was over, I wasn't even sure who was alive and who was dead. It, it seemed like everybody had been killed. So they were clearly alive. I was glad that they are alive. And they're still themselves talking in the same way. So what happens next? Well, at first, Jesse is in terrible shape. He has been horribly abused, tortured, and demeaned. He looked so bad that his friend Skinny Pete did not even recognize him at first. With that kind of abuse, he was in total survival mode, left with only a trace of himself. Therefore, his best friends leave him to crash on the bed and sit in the next room. After flipping the TV over to the news, they discover the carnage that has happened. Remember how I talked about Mike talk, uh, with Jesse in a flashback at the beginning of the Mookie movie? Sorry. What's a Mookie? It's a new, it's a new way of calling a movie. Is that a movie that isn't is really a, a movie? It's yeah, a TV it's a show. Mookie. <laughs> anyway, the, and Marco says that that scene never happened. Well, that made-up flashback was a foreshadowing that this movie-making device would be, be used throughout the rest of El Camino to enhance Jesse's post-Breaking Bad story. And like the first flashback, some happened and others did not. 
Also, new characters like Neil Candy, a welder, were added that never existed either in the real series. But they try to pretend like he did exist, which is the, the big problem with it. Because he says, he, he says to Jesse, uh, I, I, I wonder when you were going to recognize me. And, and that makes everyone wonder, wait a second, is he someone who is in Breaking Bad and we just forgot? That would be really cool and creepy. But nope, he's just made up for this movie. Well, I did want to uh, recognize the vacuum cleaner sales guy, but I'll just say save that to the end. So go ahead, Marco. Yeah, this this movie, and this movie really exposes Better Call Saul Breaking Bad fans as well. How they overrate everything, and how they say everything to do with this universe is perfect. That's the kind of environment that this whole series has created where the the showrunners they say oh we're just going to end it after five seasons because we don't want to end on a bad note as if like every single thing they do is perfect and meant to be in, in the exact place that it is like they aren't creating things new and coming up with new ideas on the spot this whole movie is full of new ideas new plots, new new areas to explore, new characters to explore, and all of it wouldn't have happened if they had just stuck to their original plan of just doing the five seasons and then quitting. So on one hand, it's good that this movie exists, but on the other hand, as you heard earlier, earlier in the review, it's not really a movie at all. It's like two TV show episodes smushed up into one. And it it a lot of it feels rushed too. And I'll talk about that. I could do more in spoilers because of the pacing. There there's certain elements of the movie that that happen and then they never happen again. They never uh, affect the plot again. And that would be a big flaw if this was a movie, which it's supposed to be, but if it was a TV show, you would understand because each episode is 45 minutes, and so you would understand like, oh, okay, and the next episode, this element will come back again. But since they think it's a movie, then it makes it a huge problem. There are lots of plot holes, too. And one of the worst parts about the movie is the flashbacks, unfortunately. The flashbacks that are good are the, the Todd flashbacks, and but then there are some horribly stupid flashbacks with characters who are basically just there because fans like them, and that's it. And then there's other characters who aren't even brought up or mentioned or anything and so this movie it just I don't know it's a big mess to me there's not a lot of it that that works for me it, it's an okay movie it's a watchable movie but it doesn't really work as a movie it works as more episodes to Breaking Bad and so I'm judging it as these are the next episodes, and uh, there's a lot of missing stuff now. There are a couple of things that were cleared up from Breaking Bad, which were uh, horrible, in my opinion, and really uh, irritating, that I'll bring up in spoilers, but other than that, this introduces a lot of new stuff, and so it's kind of weird that they do that since this is supposed to be the end. And, and, and that's another thing. Everything is supposed to be the end. Oh, this next movie's going to be the end. Okay. Oh, this next season, that's going to be the last thing. We're not going to do anything else. That's just, it's a lie. Beca because once you, once you get started, you can't stop because you, you'll keep getting these ideas. And, 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 and you, you need to have 
uh, an ending in mind, but these people, they, they're a lot more creative than you think because they did this movie, and this movie could have been a start of a whole new show. Sophie, why aren't, why aren't you interjecting, Sophie? Because I'm listening to you. Well, I totally agree, and I said that, that this isn't a movie. It's two or three episodes. And like I was going to say in, re in the review of it, and I'll just say it now, it, it was a little... I like the ending, which I'm not going to say, but it's really still left me unfulfilled. And... Uh, I think that's a shame because, you know, when they announced this, I wondered what they were going to talk about. And I guess if you really thought about, well, it must be about Jesse because they're doing this thing with the Better Call Saul. And that's a precursor to all this. And the thing with Jesse would be a post-Breaking Bad story. So, I mean, what else would it be? You know, it could maybe it could be a lot of things, but I mean that would be the thing that stood out. What do you think? Do you think the ending was the worst part of the movie? I think well, the it was ending... very mild. It was kind of like letting the air out of the balloon in a way, because it felt weird. It felt I felt empty, but I was yeah. There was nothing to feel about the ending. Yeah. Nothing. But I I still liked it, but I you know. It's just really mediocre, and it's it's horrible in terms of adding to the Breaking Bad universe because there are so many new things now that you need to uh, get to to get to, and and there's a lot of different new plots and characters and things, but the acting is good. Uh, there are some definitely some big problems with appearances from certain characters. Uh, there's one character who wears wears a bald cap, and it looks like a bald cap that you bought from Walmart. And then there's another character who gained uh, a lot of weight, and he. It's it, what's interesting is that there are some shots where you can't tell this, and where it it disguises it and makes him look exactly like the old character but then there's other shots where they blatantly just pretend like he never gained any weight and so what you should have done was either you should have shot more clever shots or you should have told this actor to lose some weight and then Jesse Jesse has like scars and things all over his body but he looks very well fed and in this movie, we never see him eat, except for in a flashback. We never see him drink, I don't think. I mean, he's he's uh, starving. Oh, no, wait, you know, he eats uh, at his friend's house, but that's it. Other than that, we never see it. And so, uh, it's confusing as to why he looks so well-fed the whole movie. Well, near the end, he looks like he's normal. Yeah, he like looks... he never went through, and this was a horrific thing, and I recognize it's almost like he had PTSD, and my God, who could blame him? Well, he did for like one scene. Yeah, for and one scene, but I mean... He never has it again. No, and and I've read about real cases of what it's like, and it's it lasts... May, people may never get over PTSD. That they it may be more controlled and, and he, better controlled. But he was like it never yeah, happened. <laughs> he has it one scene and then never again. It affects the plot never. No. In the rest of the movie. He, I mean, not even looks. Nothing. <laughs> and then let's just talk about the looks again. His his friend tells him, uh, "You sh I don't think you should shave your face because people will recognize you." And then the next scene, he comes out of the bathroom and he looks exactly like he did in season five. Except for, but well, you still could see some scars, I think, on his face. Scars, scars don't do anything. It's, he looks like the same person. It looks well. Yeah, he looks all <laughs> cleaned up, and and I, like I said, when he escaped Stupid. and driving down the road, he looked like he'd been in the mountains, and he. 
and not shaved. And he, and he had really long hair. It looked like he looked he, different. And he would, and he did look very different. So here he is running around El, Al, Albuquerque, which isn't like New York City or Chicago. Uh, somebody would recognize, especially when they're showing his picture. Weren't they showing his picture on the news? All over the place. And so, I mean, he's not exactly, he's, he's very uh, unique. He doesn't just look like anybody else. And he, all they had to do was have that hair he had at the beginning, the whole movie, and then, like, at the end, you have a scene where he shaves, and you could kind of, uh, you could kind of parallel it to, to when Walter was shaving his head when he was turning evil and instead of that you could you could use it as like a parallel as he's turning turning over a new leaf for this and that would that would really work but instead it yeah, just comes would've, off that would have been better is really stupid and dumb and then i won't say what happens next but that kind of makes up for it but kind of doesn't still because he wore this thing the whole series in some cases a hat or a cap he's given a cap by someone and he wore a cap all the time in Breaking Bad so but in general the plot is really simple we don't even need to talk about the plot because there basically isn't any plot the plot is basically he needs to escape <laughs> and, and it, it, it isn't perfectly easy it's what he goes through to escape it's very easy because well, it's, it's, just, he, it's not he escapes and that's the end of the show it's because very he wouldn't easy have a show because it, it's practically like uh i don't know it's just it's just the easiest thing in the universe because he has all these convenient flashbacks that tell him exactly what to do and that's another thing he's supposed to be a man and he doesn't make any decisions without these convenient flashbacks telling him what to do. The only decision that he makes the whole movie is uh, stupid decisions. He he decides to shave his head, and then later in the movie, he decides to stay somewhere and uh, threaten someone, and then the cops arrive. And then, <laughs> so the only decisions he makes the whole movie are stupid decisions. Everything else in the movie he has to get helped with. He has to have these flashbacks tell him explicitly what to do and hint at him and hint, hint, hint. Oh, this is so cute. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> oh, this is a fan favorite character. Aren't you glad he's back or she's back? Hint, hint, hint. And uh, that's the whole movie. And on one hand, it could have really worked if, if you made it like feel really haunting how he's like the only one around and that's kind of what it felt like at some points but then at other points there are characters and they're just cut out of the movie and they uh they could have been more in the movie they could have been more active characters and so what would you rate this movie Safi? okay well this was another movie that i found difficult to review in terms of food the only food and not a dish I could liken this movie to is a diet root beer with zero calories. No. Why? Because El Camino wasn't a movie, but instead two or three episodes, like I said originally, that they could have tacked onto the original Breaking Bad series. A show I personally, personally believed ended abruptly. This seems to be happening lately. A lot lately for no good reason. It's a trend. For example, remember the Game of Thrones? People are still talking about that one. But back to El Camino. Since I believe it's not a real movie and something else instead, I picked Diet Root Beer with zero calories. Last winter I lost 10 pounds because I coughed for three months and found it difficult to eat. As a result, my doctor had a fit. So I've been trying to gain weight. In order to do this, I've taken the step of drinking a regular soda like root beer. And someone in my family decided to buy me diet root beer, which doesn't help me gain weight at all. This diet root beer also tastes different than regular root beer too. So it's really not root beer. 
just like El Camino is not a real movie. Also, since El Camino, since it's, since it's not really root beer, El Camino left me feeling somewhat unfulfilled. I did like the ending, and my favorite part of the movie was Jesse's brief time with Badger and Skinny Pete. Okay. Wasn't me who bought the root beer. No, it I don't, wasn't. I don't buy that. I don't buy drinks with aspartame in them. Well, I didn't mention that, but that was another thing. It did not taste. It does not taste like real root beer because it has this weird aspartame taste. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna go really unconventional with this fake movie. And first, I mean, you can bring up. There are other movies that were made from TV shows that are fantastic. Charlie's Angels, the 2000s movie, Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight, uh, House of Dark Shadows, Night of Dark Shadows, Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. Those are all very strong movies. Even Bewitched. <laughs> this is how bad this movie is. It, it's led me to defending Bewitched. Even Bewitched is a is a real movie movie compared to this. Yeah. And that's that's, that's just sad, because Bewitched is probably one of the worst movies in history, and so this is not a movie, and it is a TV show episodes that should have been a part of a new series that takes place in the future, or it should have been added on to Better Call Saul, and then they should have had a crossover. And they should have went on to the future and that in a couple of seasons. So I would give this a uh, fake movie, two TV show episodes. I would give it a D plus. I'm not even gonna give it the benefit or whatever of rating it in terms of food, because it's not a movie and it's not a complete thing. It's fragmented. It's all over the place. And it's a mess. And it's two TV show episodes. And I give both of them a D plus. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, I'm still going to stick with what I had because we'll, we'll make it half and half. You do yours and I'll, and I'll have mine. It's just the usual, but that was all I could think of. And Not a movie. Of, right. Okay, well, I just wanted to bring up... I said something about this at the beginning. Remember the vacuum cleaner sales guy who helps people invent new I new identities and leave town? His character's name is L. Ed Galbraith, and he's played by Robert Forster, who passed away on October 11th, the day this movie premiered. He also did an excellent job of portraying the sheriff in Twin Peaks. He was a good actor and will be missed. I just wanted to mention him because and I didn't thought talk, was sad. I didn't talk about him at all because we're going to do a separate spoiler video so that because this really is something you need to talk more about because of how many different things there are. I won't even get into the fact that they ruined the whole uh, picture thing. The shot, the best, it was the greatest shot, trailer shot of the whole year was that one shot with the picture and then the evil people in the background and the ominous lighting, and they ruined it. But actually, the vacuum guy, he was the best part of the movie. He, he made the whole movie. He had the best acting of the movie. He had the best character in the movie, the best character arc in the movie. He was the most interesting person in the movie. And every, everything else paled in comparison to what he did in this story. Which is kind of weird, too, because Jesse is supposed to be interesting. And there's nothing interesting about him because he has no one else around him anymore. In, in Breaking Bad, he was interesting because he was always the deviant uh, goofball and then next to the straight man. Right. The straight as in like the straight man, not like sexual orientation. And, and and so in this movie, it's just him by himself. And it doesn't work very well 
to be honest. So that's they, it. They could have actually done that, done accomplished this by having his friends around him the whole movie, and you could have made him into the straight man, and just kept them as the goofballs. Right. And it would have worked perfectly. But they, I'm the, they cut the friends completely out of the movie. They just were in the beginning, like I said, and that was my favorite part because they were exactly like they were in the show, and I appreciated that because people just don't change their character overnight. Yeah. And they were, and they talked exactly like they did. They wore the the clothes that they wore exactly like they did before, and and they're funny and they're interesting. I really liked them so. Please tune in to our spoiler video because I guarantee this video itself won't answer any of your questions about why this was bad to me because there's a lot of reasons I could talk about, but they're spoiler reasons. And so I'm not going to do that in this video. So, okay, well, we'll see you soon. Goodbye, goodbye everybody. Goodbye, everybody.